Okay, good morning again. Um, we're going to start a song service with 487 in the garden. <laughs> is 518 standing on the promises Oh, 
Exodus 493, fill my cup, Lord. The next one is 526, Because He Lives.
next one is 483. I need thee every hour. Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath to each and every one of you. And I'm wishing happy Sabbath to our brothers and sisters um, watching online. This is another day that the Lord has made. And what are we going to do today? Rejoice and and be glad in it. I know that um, there's a lot that is happening individually, uh, globally, or whichever way you want to look at it. But you know one thing that we have is Jesus Christ. Amen? I, that is what sets us apart. It's not that we're not going to have challenges and issues, but let us remember that through it all, I guess as my pastor would say, through it all, he walks with us. Through it all, he never leaves us. Through it all, he loves us so much that he gave us the eternal treasure of heaven in the, per- in the person of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if he can give that to us, is there anything good that he will withhold? Amen. May he give us the faith to always trust him. Amen. So with that, I welcome each and every one of us to God's house this morning. We have some announcements as usual. There are always announcements, things to, you know, update us about. So first of all, I will call Sister Caseda. 
she wants to make an announcement um, concerning potluck issues. Thank you. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Linda thinks I'm here to do announcements, but I'd like to welcome everybody to, start to church this morning. <laughs> um, I'm going to do an announcement, but I'm feeling a little mischievous in a good way this morning. And there's a song that I haven't heard maybe in the last seven, eight years that I'd like to either teach you or we're going to just sing this morning. And it's a greeting song. We're just welcoming everybody to church this morning. And it goes like this. Let us greet somebody in Jesus' name. Let us tell them that we love them in Jesus' name. We can work together in Jesus' name. Everybody smile. Jesus loves you. Everybody smile. Jesus loves you. There's more to the song, but we're going to do that verse today. Um, we'll hear more about it later on. Did you get it? It's very simple. So here we go again. One, two, three. Let us greet somebody in Jesus' name. Let us tell them that we love them in Jesus' name. Tell them we can work together in Jesus' name. Everybody smile. Jesus loves you. Everybody smile. Jesus loves you. Somebody in Jesus' name, let us tell them that we love them. In Jesus' name, tell them we can work together. In Jesus' name, everybody smile. Jesus loves you. Everybody smile. Jesus loves you. Amen. Nice exercise and I'm sure you're feeling a lot more welcome this morning. I see all the smiles, beautiful faces down there. And now <clears throat> that was psychology 101. Now you'll remember what I'm going to say to you. <laughs> okay, so we're having a few events coming up um, in the month of September and one is a scheduled event. It should happen on the first week in September, which is our usual fellowship lunch. So our schedule is normally every first um, Sabbath of the month. And if the month has five Sabbaths, we do first and third Sabbath. This month of September, we are not going to follow that particular schedule because we are having a youth day on the 9th. Of September and we've decided to move our fellowship lunch from the 1st of September to coincide with uh, the youth day event we're going to be having a lot of visitors because we've invited um, uh, the youth from around the region uh, the youth leader would probably be better to explain what that means but the translation is we're going to have a lot of guests so the appeal this morning is one for you to remember that Fellowship lunch is not going to be on the 1st. It's going to be on the 9th. So whatever it is that you're planning to bring for fellowship lunch is not for next week, okay? It's for the 9th. And I'm going to ask everybody as far as possible to bring an item. Um, we, there, can't be in, there can't be too much food, okay? The 16th, um, the emphasis is going to be prayer ministries. Um, and because the ninth falls like the week before, um, it's not going to change anything. But Prayer Ministries is going to actually be hosting the fellowship lunch that was scheduled for the 16th. So we are having fellowship lunch two weeks in a row. That's the ninth and on the 16th as well. Okay? All right. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful Sabbath. Thank you, Sister Casida. I believe that God wanted us to do that, greet one another. That was why I said, Sister Casida, 
just come up, come up and make that announcement. Thank you so much. And um, I don't want to forget the visitors in our midst. We have first and second time visitors here today. So we welcome you all to uh, worship with us today. At this time, um, there's a video, a message from the president of the Ontario Conference. Uh, it's an initiative. Jean uh, is going to play it for us. Uh, we'll listen to what he has to say. I do. It speaks for itself. Thank you for listening. Dear sisters and brothers, I greet you in Christ on behalf of the Ontario Conference Administration. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. In Matthew 25, Jesus spoke of the faithful servants who visited the sick, provided shelter for strangers, and helped those in need. We are called to embody these values and extend a helping hand to those who are less fortunate. In Matthew 24, Jesus urged his followers to pray for their fellow refugees not endure the challenges of winter. Winter indeed brings its own set of hardships, especially for those who have sought refuge in our city of Toronto and across our province. Many of these newcomers lack adequate winter clothing to shield them from the cold. With this in mind, we are thrilled to invite you to join our winter clothes drive for refugees. This is an opportunity for us to put our faith in, into action and show love to our neighbors who are facing difficulties. By providing warm clothing, we can make a tangible difference in their lives and let them know that they are not alone. Let's come together as a community united by compassion and reach out to those who are in need. Pastor Andrew King, Compassion Ministries Director, will give us more details on what type of clothing we will be asked to contribute. As President Babulovich has already outlined, this opportunity to do a winter clothes drive is our opportunity to get involved in this situation. We can understand that our refugees have been out there in the streets and now being housed in church basements. So we as the Seventh-day Adventist Church are now moving forward by faith. And as he says in Matthew, you were naked and we clothed you. The conference has taken this winter clothes drive initiative and what we're asking you to do in the local churches we're asking you to go out and buy a new coat, a new winter coat. As you buy this new winter coat or winter accessories that go along with the coat, a hat, glove, scarf, however the spirit moves you, we're going to ask you to collect it in your local church and put it in a safe place. We will connect with your pastors and we'll do a pickup. Now, it's getting cold and winter is on its way. So we want to get this done this before the Labor Day weekend. The time is against us. Remember, winter is on its way. Thank you so much for your outpouring of love and be willing to join with us in this ministry at this time. God bless you. The Conference Administrative Committee voted to allocate significant donation towards the project. All of us individually and collectively are encouraged to participate. Together, we can reflect the love of Christ and fulfill His call to care for the vulnerable among us. Join us in this noble endeavor and let us make this winter a season of warmth and hope for all. It is my prayer that we are known and remembered as a praying, caring, and growing conference. Thank you for your heart of generosity and your commitment to bring Christ's hands and feet into our world today. May you and your families be blessed. Amen. So it is now time for us to dig into our basement, into those boxes, and look for the winter coats we don't need anymore. Amen. Let us be the hands and feet of Jesus. I continue with the announcements. <clears throat> As usual, there's Bible study classes Sabbath afternoon, 5 p.m. Please join us. And the Prophecy Series, Sunday evenings from 6 to 7 p.m. We're using the Amazing Facts Advanced Study Guides. Join on the Zoom platform 
and pastor will lead out in this prophecy series. You're all welcome. I just want to add that for the past three Sundays, we have been dealing, studying about the sanctuary. It's such an extensive study. You won't believe it. On three Sundays, we have not even finished. So please, you're invited to join because I think this is really one of the things that sets us apart as Seventh-day Adventists because I don't know any other denomination that I even know anything or think about anything about the sanctuary. Please let us join. And also, prayer meetings on Wednesdays, 7 p.m. on Zoom. Uh, the Zoom information is uh, on this, in this bulletin, on the first page there. And also, there's ladies' Bible study. The study on the minor prophets will resume on Monday, September the 4th, at 10 a.m., 2 p.m., and 7 p.m. Let us continue to pray you know, for this program and continue to keep Mary Clark in prayer because as we can see, she's doing it three times on that day. May the Lord continue to bless each and every one of us. Amen. Beginner vegetarian cooking series to be offered at the Belleville Seventh-day Adventist Church Thursdays in September. So we're back to that, praise be to God. Registration is required lectures, recipe demonstrations, handouts, and taste testing are offered. The cost is $60 per series. And for more information and to register, please email uh, Marie Clark at marieclarkok at gmail.com. It's in the bulletin. And my dear sister has announced about the Fellowship Potluck Lunch. Thank you again, Sister Caseda. So the Youth Day is September the 9th. All, we are inviting all the youth to share their ideas. The youth leaders are inviting all the youth to share their ideas so that you, they, we can make it an amazing Youth Day. Please drop your ideas in WhatsApp group or get in touch with Andrew or Junelle. And the prayer day, September the 16th. Again, God has answered our prayer for a special prayer day, amen? The director of the Health and, Ministries, Health and Prayer Ministries Department of the Ontario Conference, Sister Edith Haberadas, will be speaking at our church on that day, September the 16th, 2023. In the afternoon, she will conduct a seminar you know, on prayer. The prayer team believes that we all would like to know more about praying, amen? and about prayer, because the Bible says pray ceaselessly. And if the Bible tells us to pray ceaselessly, we want to know, you know more about prayer and praying. So what a great opportunity we have to do that now. So please let us come out in large numbers for this program. Invite your friends to come to church on September the 16th so we can you know, learn more about prayer and, you know, and be a part of this program. If there is anything that we need at this time, being honest, searching our hearts, it's prayer. Because nobody knows anything anymore. Like, we don't know what's going to happen the next day, the next moment. But when we connect with God in prayer, he will take care of us. We'll have that peace. We'll be able to be comf have the comfort, you know, that um, we, we will have when we are connected with God. And um, also... My sister has talked about the potluck. Contributions to the potluck are welcome. The prayer ministry will be um, facilitating the potluck on that day. So please contribute to it. And of course, September the 30th, 3-0. Sometimes, because of my accent, people think I say 20 instead of 30. So it's 3-0. That's when you're having the children, I mean, sorry, the church business meeting. It's not 20. But it's 30, three, zero. Children's Day program is also on that same Sabbath. And then we normally pray for families every week. Today we're going to pray for Lorraine and Greg Hampton and the Hardy family. But next week, please bear, keep it in mind, starting from tonight, please pray for Elsie Hartwick, Enoch and Raquel Hernandez. And um, 
May the Lord bless us as we continue today. That's the end of the announcements. So at this time, it's call for call to worship. May I ask everybody to stand up? Thank you. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, we have come together to worship you on this beautiful Sabbath day. Lord, we know that your angels are already here waiting to take record of the worship that we ascribe to you today. And so I pray, Lord, that every worshiper within the hearing of, of my voice will open their hearts to receive your word and our worship will truly ascend to you as sweet incense. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please let us remain standing as we sing hymn 212. After that, we're going to have the scripture reading by Debbie. Thank you.
Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. This morning's scripture reading is taken from Isaiah 25, 9, and it reads, And it will be said in that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. May the Lord add the blessings to the reading of his holy word. Amen. Amen. Please, um, it's time for intercessory prayer. And I would ask that as best as we can, let us kneel down for prayer at this time. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we come to you once again just as we are. Nothing in our hands but to the cross we cling. Father, we thank you for this beautiful Sabbath day that you've given unto us. We thank you because we can never thank you enough for who you are, for what you do in our lives, and for what you continue to do in our lives. So we give glory and honor unto your name. Father Lord, we thank you because you are God, our God, the creator God, the redeemer God. Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ who died so that we might live. Father Lord, at this time, we acknowledge that we are sinners. We are sinners. And you have told us in your word that the reward of it is death, but we thank you because Jesus Christ died for us, and so he's taking on the death that we would have been, been entitled to. For those of who, who believe in him shall not perish, that's what your word says, but have everlasting life. So at this time, I want to just give the congregation a moment, a brief moment, to just speak with you. To speak confession of sins, Father Lord, and repentance before we continue. Oh, Father, we thank you because your promises are sure they are yea and amen. You promise that if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just. Not only to forgive us of our sins, but to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord, for caring from us and cleansing us and forgiving us of our sins, Father Lord. Only you are able to forgive sins. So we're thankful that we have you as our Lord and our Savior. Father Lord, I just want to pray for this congregation today including those brothers and sisters who are online in this divine worship. Father, you see each and every one of us. You know our needs. We do not have to start listing them before your throne of grace. But you told us to ask and we will receive. Seek and we shall find. So this morning I'm asking, Lord, for each and every one of us, whatever challenges we are facing, we may be facing at this time, whatever it is, Father Lord. I pray that you meet each and every one of us at the very point of our needs, Father in heaven. I thank you because only you can do what you can do, Father Lord. Father Lord, be it healing, spiritually or physically, be it financial challenges, Lord. Father Lord, be it mental health situation, because there's a lot of stress going on at this time, I pray for healing. Because Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross, he did not only take away our sins, 
but by his stripes we are healed. So I'm standing on that promise this morning for healing as only you see fit, Lord. So we pray for the shortings and we pray for the members in the hospital. May you please deal with them, comfort them at this time. We pray for those who are traveling, grant them traveling mercies. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. You are the greatest comforter. May you please continue to comfort them with the blessed hope that we have that that day is coming. The, that morning when Jesus Christ will appear in the clouds of heaven and take his own home. Let this be a, a true source of comfort to those who are mourning. Father in heaven, I also want to thank you, Lord, for our pastor. I commit him into your hands. He's not here today. Pray for him and his family, wherever they are. Be with them. Continue to provide him the strength to lead all his churches, Lord. And as he's doing so, help him to continue to hold on to your hands, Father in heaven. I just thank you because you're more than able. At this time, I want to pray for the families we're praying for this week. And we have Lorraine and Greg Hampton. Father, you know them. You know their needs. I pray that you be with them. They're going out and they're coming in. Meet them at the very point of their needs, Father Lord. Above all, help them to remain true and faithful to you. All of us need to remain true and faithful to you. So I'm just praying for my brother and sister that you help them to continue to walk with you, have a closer relationship with you. I also pray for Scott, Scott and Andrea Hardy, and Shinur and Shalisha. And Father Lord, I'm also praying for young Anna, Hannah, who is here. I pray for this family, Lord. I pray that you continue to bless them. I pray, Lord, that, whatever, that you make whatever crooked ways that could be you know, happening in their lives, make, may you make them straight, Lord. I pray, Lord, because you are the only one that can do it for, for us, for them, Lord. Father in heaven, I thank you. Let the, your, the love that you have continue to radiate in their hearts, Father Lord. To continue to look up to you as the author and finisher of their faith, Lord, come what may. And at this time, I want to pray for the speaker of the day, Brother Peter King. Father, Lord, thank you for bringing him here safely. Thank you because you have appointed him to speak to us today. Thank you, Lord, because you will speak through him. I believe you have a, a word for us to hear from you through him today. Please anoint his tongue as he speaks to us today. Let whatever he speaks not be of his own, but from you. Father in heaven, I thank you. I bless you. And we turn all the honor, all the glory to you. And we also want to pray concerning the Children's Day, the Youth Day, and the Prayer Day that's coming up in September. September is a, appears to be a, quite a busy month in this church, and we give glory to you, Father Lord. Your house shall be called the house of prayer, so your word says, Lord. And you have told us to pray ceaselessly. Help us never to forget that. Because all we have now is trust in you and to continue to connect with you through prayer. Please take control of all these days. Help for the arrangements going ahead. And um, let the days be to your glory and your glory only. We thank you. We bless you. Return all the honor to you, all the glory. And I have this prayer box that your people have put their requests in. Father, trust and obey. It is out of trust that they have put these requests on pieces of paper, put, it in the, put them in the box, and trust in that you know what they have put there. So, Father Lord, may you please answer these requests according to your riches and glory, according to your will, Father Lord. The just shall live by faith. We believe. Help whatever unbelief that may be found in us. Thank you, Father Lord, for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So as we continue the divine service, it's time for tithes and offerings. And um, the offering emphasis for today is the Ontario Conference Advance. That's our conference. And God loves the cheerful giver. So please dig deep into your pockets and provide your tithes as I, and offerings as I call upon the deacons to collect God's tithes and your offerings. Thank you. please thank you pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the tithes and the offerings your people have presented before you. Father, this is a reasonable sacrifice. We thank you because everything we have is from you. Thank you for putting it in our hearts to give out of what you've given us. I pray that this money be applied, you know, to where it should go. And I pray, Lord, that you provide for those who perhaps may not be able to, have not been able to give today. And I pray that you grant wisdom to those who are going to disperse these funds. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. It's time for children's story. And I believe the Sloan family are giving the story this, giving the story this morning. Thank you.
Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Today I'm, today I'm going to be reading the story of Joseph. Long ago, there lived a boy named Joseph. God had given him the power to interpret dreams. One day, Joseph told his brothers he had two dreams where sheaves of hay, the sun, the moon, and the stars bowed down to him. This meant that one day his family would bow down before him. This made Joseph's brothers so angry that they threw him into a well. They sold Joseph as a slave, and he was taken to Egypt. Soon Pharaoh learned that Joseph could interpret dreams. One of Pharaoh's dreams meant that a famine was coming. Joseph told Pharaoh to collect food to, to store. Pharaoh was so impressed that he put Joseph in charge. When the famine came, Joseph's brothers went to Egypt for food. Joseph saw his brothers and forgave him. Then he brought his whole family to live in Egypt. Who wants to pray? You, Jesus, thank you for that we are here and that nobody gets hurt and that we will have a safe drive. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you very much for the children's story, Sloan family. The story of Joseph is evergreen because it teaches young people what God expects from them. Amen? So thank you for choosing that story. We really appreciate it. So it's time for worshiping song, and we have a sister, Debbie McLean. Thanks, Debbie. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> uh, when I get into my car, I have a couple different channels that I listen to on my Sirius XM, and the Bluegrass Junction is one of them. And um, it has a lot of gospel music on it. And I've heard this song the last little while, um, and it's called My Prayer, and it's by Brooke and Darren Aldridge. keeps moving. <laughs> okay. When my life gets dreary and I'm feeling weary from trying find a way to survive I give all my problems to someone who can solve them tucked inside this prayer I say each night Lord I seek your blessing give me Give me of my own sins, show me the way again, in your name I pray, amen. Life can almost break you, sometimes it will make you stronger 
than you thought you could be When my skies are not in blue I know who to talk to Every time I do He comforts me Thank you, Sister Debbie. God bless you as you use your talent for him. It's now time for worshiping word. As you see in the bulletin, you see the title of the sermon, Weight Training, and our speaker today is Elder Oral Peter King. I just want to tell us a few things about our speaker for today because I know you want to know. He's originally from the beautiful island of Jamaica. Amen? Amen. Jamaicans, hey, man, well, Aguan. <laughs> so he's from that island and has been a Seventh day Adventist all his life. He has served the church in various ministries, including music, Sabbath school, Pathfinders. Yeah, I think that's how his face is familiar. I'm a master guy, too. So family life and elders. Currently, he's an elder at the Agape Temple Seventh-day Adventist Church. He loves the Lord with all his heart and is determined to make heaven his home and to get others ready for the kingdom. I think we can, you know, be determined as well to make heaven our homes. Amen? and to get others ready for the kingdom. After all, that's what Jesus says. Go ye and make disciples of all nations. I will come again and take you with me. So having said that, please let us hear from brother, brother Peter King what the Lord has prepared for, for us today. And please keep him in your prayer as he's speaking to us today. Thank you very much. Still morning. Good morning, Belleville. It's uh, indeed a pleasure to be with you today. Um, first, I just want to thank all the persons who participated in our service so far. Sister Linda, you did a lot of the heavy lifting. Thank you for your service here at the Belleville SDA Church. And Sister Debbie for filling in so ably with our scripture, sorry, Sister Deborah, Deborah, my apologies, for filling in with the scripture reading and reading it so ably earlier. Um, also to the Sloan family, thank you for that children's story. Indeed, the story of Joseph is an awesome story of how training a child can lead to great things later in life. And of course, Sister Debbie, now for that special music in song, My Prayer. It 
it's indeed a privilege to know that we have a God that we can go to. Amen? Amen. What would we be if we had no one to talk to during those rough times of life? It's good to know that whatever we're going through, we can talk to the Lord, our Creator, and He hears us. He's not an absentee landlord. He will hear us from heaven, and He will answer our prayers. I also want to thank Pastor Geddes for allowing me to share his pulpit today. Um, I also want to thank my wife, Lisa, for being here. Some of you don't know her, so I'll ask her to wave her hand. Thank you for your support. We have been visiting your lovely church here at Belleville for a little while now, and we're just happy to be here today. Um, I also th want to thank some of my Agape family members, the St. Jude's family. Could you wave your hands? <laughs> okay, thank you for being here as well. The title of the message today is, as outlined in your bulletin, Weight Training. Weight Training. Now, God has laid a word on my heart, and... I know it will be a blessing for all of us. It may be a sermon for me, so if you hear some things that don't apply to you, just take it that it may be a sermon for me, okay? <laughs> but God has a word for all of us, I believe. But before we get into the word, I ask that we bow our heads as we pray. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we have come to that moment when we will hear a word from you. Father, I just ask that you will, like you did with Isaiah, touch my lips with a live coal from your altar that will burn every dross of sin from me so that the word that you have given to me, Lord, will come through with power to your people today and that they will be blessed. So, Lord, let the words that you are going to say through my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for, Lord, you are indeed all our strength, and you are indeed our great Redeemer, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, yeah, I see my clicker is working, so thank you, Brother Eugene. I think it's fair to say that we live in a fast-paced world that is changing exponentially. One can say that we live in an instant or a now generation where everything has to happen quickly. How many of you remember those road trips you would take with your families? Everyone would start all excited, you know, to go on this road trip. But only a few hours into the trip, what would be the familiar phrase that you would hear from your children? Well, yes, they would say we're bored, but the, f the familiar one I'm looking for is, are we there yet? And you'd hear that pretty often. Gone are the days when we, wait, we want to wait too long for anything anymore. Now, I have a confession to make, and is Belleville a church that can keep secrets? Or no, or should I not confess? I, I, I see people... <laughs> I see some people looking at me as if to say they're not going to keep my secret. Will you keep my secret? Okay, so I'll, I'll tell you my secret. So, if I order a package from Amazon, if I'm going to order a package from Amazon, it has to come next day, right? I will sit for hours and look at all the packages there and look at the delivery dates, and if it's not coming within two days, I'm just not ordering that package. That, that's just my confession. It doesn't happen to you, right? You don't order. <laughs> you don't order online. Okay, praise the Lord for that. We are now in the time when writing and sending letters through the post office is a thing of the past. I think it's probably now studied in modern history classes when they teach you what people used to do back in the day. In fact, if I should do a survey, maybe it is that many of us don't even know where the post office in our area is. We rely instead on emails, 
and in some cases prefer even quicker means of communication, like text messaging or some other messaging service, like WhatsApp, Twitter, or these days they call it X, or Instagram, etc. Very few are okay waiting for anything anymore. Yet, as Christians, there is one thing that has not been rushed so far, and that is the coming of Christ. It's been all for almost 2,000 years since he told us that he would come again, and still we wait for that event. During this time, generations have passed, and it's easy to see how today there could be apathy and doubt. But how do we spend this time waiting for the Lord's return? What are some of the inherent pitfalls that we should avoid? Are there dangers lurking that we need to be aware of while we wait? What are the things we need to do to make our wait effective. Today, we'll be looking at a few points around waiting for the Lord's return and the things that God calls us to do during this important time. In Psalm 27 and verse 34, David writes, sorry, Psalm 27 verses 13 to 14, David writes, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Psalm 27 is entitled, and you see the title there, an exuberant declaration of faith. In earlier verses, David talks about being fearless and unafraid because of his relationship with God. Throughout the chapter, he states the reason for his faith and seeks to maintain it through a connection with God. This chapter is a sermon on its own but we won't stay in it today. It is in the last verses that we find the first point of this sermon, and that is, while we wait, we are to develop courage. While we wait, we are to develop what? We are to develop courage. Now, the courage spoken of here is not an absence of fear. It is spiritual fortitude, the kind that keeps us grounded and unmovable in Christ. The Lord speaking to Joshua about this courage in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 7 says, Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. Going back to Psalm 27 and our verses of emphasis, which are verses 13 and 14, we see that this courage during waiting starts with belief. This belief results in faith in God. As we wait for Christ's return, our belief in God has to grow and become strong. The courage we gain is directly proportional to our belief in him. As our belief in Christ deepens, so does our faith and courage in him. Our weight, therefore, must be punctuated with belief. A belief that, like the three Hebrew boys, creates in us a settled determination that we will not bow to Satan's attacks, even, even 
if God chooses not to save us from them. Weight training involves a growing belief and faith in God, resulting in unmovable courage. The second thing that weight training requires is for us to develop trust and hope in God. So the second thing that we need to develop is what? Trust and hope in God. Now in Psalm chapter 33, verses 18 to 22, it tells us, Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death, and to keep them alive in famine. O oh, our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let your mercy, O oh Lord, be upon us just as we hope in you. Now throughout our wait experience, we have to develop hope and trust in God. As we reverence him, we will see various instances of his work in our lives through situations. And as we grow in Christ, each situation will increase our trust in him and give us renewed hope in his return. And these are good or bad situations. Now, Job exemplifies this deep, unfailing trust in God that we need to develop during our wait. When he says in Job chapter 13 and verse 5, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Our trust in God at times has to defy even the very logic of what we see and allow us to hold on to him even if he seems to be the source of our distress. And I want to repeat that. Our trust in God at times has to defy even the logic of what we see and allow us to hold on to him, even if he seems to be the source of our distress. This, is the level, of, this level of trust does not come easy. There will be obstacles along the way. But trust in God needs to be a progression in every circumstance of our lives as we wait, eagerly wait for his return. Now, we know it's impossible for us to attain this in our own strength. But the good thing is that we have a promise in Philippians 4 and verse 13 that we can accomplish some things through Christ. Okay, I see that you're listening. That's correct. Philippians 4 and verse 13 reminds us that even though this seems impossible, we can accomplish all things through Christ who strengthens us. The third thing that we need to do when we are engaged in weight training is that we are to ground ourselves in the word of God while we wait. We are to ground ourselves in the word of God while we wait. Psalm 130 verse 5 reminds us of the importance of God's word as part of our weight training when it records, I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I do hope. The Word of God is a critical source of knowledge that reveals God to us and in return deepens our relationship with him. We cannot neglect the study of God's Word during our wait. It is not enough for us to come to church on Sabbath to listen to a sermon, and while this is good, it is not a substitute for our own personal Bible study. We have to become like the Bereans, who essentially took notes during sermons, but went and studied for themselves. 
there are many last day deceptions to come upon us and that will overtake us if we are ignorant of God's word or just have a superficial knowledge of it. Perilous times are ahead during our wait for Christ's return. But God is our sure defense. Job describes the mark that we are to aim for in Job chapter 23 and verse 12 when he says, I have not departed from the commandment of his lip. I have treasured the word of his mouth more than my necessary food. Can you think about that? I have treasured the word of his mouth more than my necessary food. The text here is not saying that we are no longer to have food. It is saying that we all need a priority shift, that much more time needs to be spent in God's word. And if we are honest with each other, we can say that there's much room for growth here, right? There is much room for growth here. As part of weight training, let us focus, with God's help, on putting his word in the place of prominence that it deserves. Our weight training involves lifting, the lifting of our Bibles and the spirit of prophecy, the lifting of God's word from its pages so that the Holy Spirit can deposit them in our minds. We cannot, brethren, be grounded by what we don't read. God's word cannot be part of our lives by osmosis or some kind of transference. To get its potent effect, we need not only to hear the word of God, we need to devote time reading it so that it can guide us during our wait period of waiting. Now the fourth point is that weight training involves shifting our focus more towards the things of God and less towards the things of this earth. That is, weight training involves shifting our focus more towards the things of God and less towards the things of this earth. During his letter to the brethren at Philippi, Paul admonishes them about the danger of placing focus on the things of earth more than the things of heaven. In Philippians chapter 3, verses 17 to 20, he writes, Brethren, join in following my example and note those who so walk as they have us for a pattern. For many of whom I told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their minds on earthly things, for our citizenship is where? In heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. In our time, like his, or in his time, sorry, like ours, there were brethren who were waiting for Christ's return but lost their focus. Their gaze eventually turned to earthly things, which is what verse 19 tells us, and as a result, they lost their way and became enemies of the cross. Their end, it is recorded, was the end of destruction. We too have been waiting a long time for Christ to return. We have heard it many times that his coming is near. The danger we face is that we can become numb to this fact and get complacent. Our eyes that were once fixed on Christ during our conversion and baptism can start to wander 
all around and our attention can shift. The distractions the devil throws at us can over time wear us down or we can become caught up simply with just living. Whatever the case is, while we wait, we all are in danger of taking our eyes off the prize and losing sight of what truly matters. What are some of the signs of this? Well, the things of God become routine. Maybe we have devotions where we read one verse of scripture, we pray a repeated, sometimes thoughtless prayer, and we just rush out the door. Or we come to church, we sing, we read the scripture, we hear the sermon, but we take no mental or physical notes, and the messages of the day from God are gone from our minds by the time we greet the preacher at the door. We may be too busy attending church meetings while our Bibles gather dust, or we are more interested in the latest social media posts celebrity movements and movies than we are in church activities. Paul is clear in his admonition in verse 20 to remember that while we wait for our Lord Jesus' return, our citizenship is not here on this earth, but in heaven. And because of that fact, the things of God must become our focus during our wait. Our dependence must be on him to keep this priority in check. It's not about us doing it. Our dependence must be on him to keep this priority in check. The songwriter tells us, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow what? Strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. This, brethren, is essential to our weight training. Now, the fifth aspect of weight training is that weight must develop patience in us. Weight must develop what? Patience in us. This race of life is not for the swift but for all who will endure to the end. We have heard it said many times that the spiritual race is not a sprint. It is not a 100 meter dash that is over in 9.x seconds. It is akin to a marathon and demands endurance. Patience is a virtue that every Christian must have if we are to make it to the kingdom of God. James, writing on this, declares in James chapter 5, verses 7 and 8, Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain, you also be patient. Establish your heart for what? The coming of the Lord is at hand. It has been almost 2,000 years since Christ declared that he would come again. As we wait, we can become impatient, but there is danger in, in being impatient. The story of Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 13 is one such that highlights this danger. And I won't go through all the details, I'll just give you the summary of it. In a nutshell, Saul was told by Samuel to wait for him to offer burnt and peace offering for seven days while the Philistines were attacking Israel. So, he waited for the seventh day, the seven days, but then decided that he would offer the sacrifice since he did not see Samuel. And in verses 13 and 14, Samuel pronounced that because of Saul's impatience, God would give his kingdom to a man after his own heart 
David. You see, through impatience, Saul's reign over Israel was cut short, and the Lord gave his kingdom to David. While we wait, our characters have to be refined, and we need to allow the Holy Spirit to help us to develop the patience we need to remain in his will. Weight training involves allowing all our actions, not just some, but all our actions, to be guided by God and to develop patience. Now finally, while we wait, we need to be in a consistent state of preparedness and watchfulness. What is that? We need to be in a what? A consistent state of watchfulness and preparedness. By now, we should see that waiting on Christ's return is not a passive act. On the contrary, it involves action. It involves us being in a constant state of preparedness and watchfulness. In the parable of the wise and foolish virgins of Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 to 13, we are reminded of the need for constant preparedness and watchfulness. We all know the story well, so we'd, I don't have to go through all the details. But both sets of virgins waited for the bridegroom and fell asleep. But when he came, only one set was prepared with enough oil representing the Holy Spirit to meet him. 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 4 and 6 tells us, But you, brethren, be not in darkness, so that the day should overtake you, and we're talking about the day of the Lord's returning now, so that the day, this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor darkness. Therefore, let, not, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Sister White, commenting on this in Acts of the Apostle, page 260, writes, There are in the world today many who choose to close their eyes to the evidences that Christ has given to warn men of his coming. They seek to quiet all apprehension, while at the same time, the signs of the end are rapidly fulfilling and the world is hastening to the time when the Son of Man shall be revealed in the clouds of heaven. Paul teaches that it is what? It is sinful to be indifferent to the signs which are to precede the second coming of Christ. Those guilty of this neglect he calls children of night and darkness. He encourages the vigilant and watchful to take these words, but ye brethren are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are what? Children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor darkness. Therefore, let us what? Not sleep, as do others, but let us what? Watch and be sober. I heard it said once that a Christian needs to be one who has his Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other. You see, the signs of Christ's second coming are fast fulfilling even in our very lifetime. The time is now, not yesterday, the time is now to first be prepared ourselves and to help others to prepare and to watch all the happenings around us for his second coming. Now we know that not every single event will have an end time prophetic significance, but we cannot know if they do 
if we are not aware of them. So that's why we need to have the Bible in one hand and have the newspaper in the other. You see, Belleville, the church, the devil, sorry, is marshalling circumstances and his agents for the final conflict. Let us not be caught unprepared for what is about to come. So as I close, I'll summarize the weight training points that we went through. And they are, while we wait, we are to develop what? Courage. We are to develop courage. We are to develop hope and trust in God during our wait. We are to ground ourselves in the word of God while we wait. While we wait, our focus needs to shift what? More towards the things of God and less towards the things of this earth. Waiting must develop what? Patience in us. And while we wait, we need to be in a constant state of preparedness and watchfulness. Our scripture reading that was read so ably earlier in Isaiah chapter 25 and verse 9 states, And it shall be, it shall be said in that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will rejoice, we will be glad, sorry, and rejoice in his salvation. This pronouncement can be made by all of us who complete our way training. Brethren, I repeat, we are nearing home. We don't know the day or the hour, but it cannot be very long from now. Just take a look at a few of these recent scenes. And I know you know them all. On the left here, we have the wildfires that ravaged Hawaii recently. And on the right, we have the wildfires that are ravaging our own country here, Canada. This one is of the recent Hurricane Hillary that was a once in a 84 year event on the, west coast, on the west coast of Mexico and the US. Now these are just a smidget of the current events pointing to the nearness of Christ's return. There is a work to do. We are almost beyond the point of getting ready and more to that of remaining ready and getting others ready. And I'll repeat that. We are almost beyond the point of getting ready and more to that of remaining ready and getting others to be ready. We have not been left alone to do this work of preparation. Ready or not, Christ is coming. And we need to engage in our weight training in order to go home with him. He is offering the infinite resources of heaven to help us to be ready. But we need to be willing to accept this offer. So as I close, my appeal today is a simple one. Are you willing, by God's grace and through his strength, to allow your life to be transformed during this waiting period so that you can be ready to meet him when he returns? If so, please stand with me as we pray. Let us pray. Our loving God and our Father, we truly just want to thank you for your goodness to us. Lord, we want to thank you for this message that came to us today. We know, Lord, that indeed your coming is very, very near, perhaps even in our lifetime. And truth be told, there is still a work for us to do. Father, we just pray that you will have mercy on every single one of us within the hearing of my voice, that you will help us, Lord, to do the work of preparation that is necessary to get ourselves ready 
and to get our friends and neighbor ready for the final events of Earth history which are about to unfold and for your soon return. So Lord, thank you again for your goodness to us. Thank you that you have not left us alone, but that you are here and that you are willing to open the infinite resources of heaven to help us to be ready. Forgive us, Lord, where we may have not done as much as we ought to do. And from this day forward, Lord, as we have stood in recommitment to you, may you help us to get our lives aligned and in order with your will so that we can be prepared to meet you when you come. It's my prayer with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank Brother Peter, uh, Peter King for the sermon, Wait Training. Indeed, we know not the hour, so let us be ready and help others to be ready. So our closing hymn is We Know Not the Hour, hymn 214. Let us remain standing as we sing. <laughs> Let us remain standing for the benediction. Let us pray. Kind Father, we want to thank you for these moments that we have spent in your courts today. We pray, Lord, that as we leave from this building, that we will indeed carry your presence with us, not only through this day, but through the remainder of our lives. 
So now, may you bless us and keep us. May you cause your face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May you lift up the light of your sweet countenance upon us and give us peace, peace in our homes, peace in our lives, and peace eventually when you come with the Prince of Peace. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.